Hello, students. Hi, everyone. Hello, and how are you doing? Uh, good afternoon, everyone. It is a very gloomy afternoon here in where, I, where I'm staying, and it's actually raining. So I hope my internet is going to hold up. Huh? I hope it's not going to be lagging too much. Okay, so is everyone, you know, uh, getting ready for your SPM? I'm, I hope you've had a good week with your BM and English papers. Okay, good evening, Jia Wei. All right, I hope you did well for your papers. Now you can forget about English and your BM. Now you, next week, you've got your moral and your sejarah and your mathematics, okay? So you're concentrating for next week, okay? So I'm very glad that you have taken a little bit of time just to follow this class so that you can learn a little bit, all right? Of course, you cannot be spending too much time on so many other things. One hour is just good enough for you, okay? So that uh, next week, I have another class. Hopefully, I can help you as much as I can before your SPM uh, paper for biology, okay, on the 16th of March. Okay, ex-potato, hello. Hi, uh, how are you? Thank you for joining, and Jia Wei and everyone who's here. Okay, so today, um, my topic, okay, so I'm going to go very topical. So I find that this uh, chapter or this topic on uh, blood and also immunity is quite, quite, uh, quite popular, all right, especially with this, you know, pandemic of COVID-19. Uh, so so I'm, I'm trying to not really predicting, but I feel that many of the questions that I've gone through, uh, that means the Negri Negri papers, uh, all the Negri Negri and all that. Hello, Alim. Hello, Jen Shen. Good evening. Yeah, I find that many of these papers, they always ask about this COVID-19 uh, virus. Uh, I think it's going to be the in thing. So it'd be good if you can keep up and learn about your immunity, and also try to find some information about COVID-19, especially about herd immunity. Now, this is a new term that we have not heard before we have this MCO thing, right? Before we had this COVID-19. So now that we had the COVID-19, and then we start this new term started coming up. So what is herd immunity? Uh, okay, so you need to think about it. Uh, actually, you can go online and find out what's herd immunity. So I just very briefly, herd immunity is the immunity that you can get just by getting the entire population at least about 90% vaccinated, okay? Because if majority of the population is already vaccinated, we will achieve what we get, we call herd immunity. Herd immunity means majority of the people are already vaccinated. Therefore, the probability of contracting the disease is already less. And even if the person who gets the disease, uh, the person is, let's say, already vaccinated, he may have mild, mild uh, symptoms and the person is not so likely to transfer to another person who is not vaccinated. So her, having herd immunity actually also protects people who are not vaccinated. I'm very sure you've heard of people who refuse to, vac to take vaccine, right? People who are very scared of the COVID-19 vaccination. So they are not taking the vaccine. They are very dead against it. By having other people take the vaccine, actually these people who are not taking vaccine are also protected. Okay, so herd immunity, you must achieve certain figure. It's about at least, I would say, maybe about at least 75% and above of the population. Then once the about at least majority of the people are already vaccinated, that means the people, the minority, who are not vaccinated will also be protected because number one the people who are vaccinated are very less likely to get it okay so they are not going to get uh infection then kalau mereka tidak mendapat uh infeksi ataupun jangkitan maka dia tidak dapat they cannot transfer this disease to another the person who is not vaccinated so that means the vaccinated people are also safe okay number two is even if the person who's vaccinated contracts COVID-19. The they've mentioned uh, that the symptoms will be very mild. Probably the person is not going to be severely affected, and this person will also be less likely to uh, to to die of it, or maybe to even uh, to to transfer it to another person. So that is what we call by herd immunity. Okay, you can Google up. Okay, and find out. Just type Google. Uh, just type on the Google search bar herd immunity, and you read all about it. Maybe now you do not know how to write it. But the concept goes like that, okay? So it's like we are trying, every country now is trying to achieve herd immunity for COVID-19. 
Okay, right. Chong Chong, uh, good evening. Yes, uh, Zena and Alim. Okay, so let me go on to today's lesson. Uh. Today's one, I'm going to revise on blood, okay, and the circulatory system. Just uh, These are SPM questions, actually, that came out some years ago, okay, but not too many years ago, lah, all right? But the, the, the subject is still very relevant because the syllabus is still the same for these topics, okay? Let me go through now. All right, later on, you may uh, want to share it with your... Uh, your video, this video with your friends. All right, I'm going to show you. Okay, so I hope you can see it now. Huh? So let me start now. And next week uh, is going to be uh, my last Pachutan uh, here for you, our students to help you all. So I, I'm going to show you, oh, sorry. I'm going to show you some uh, tips on how to answer some questions involving calculation. Okay, let me start now. Huh? All right. Uh, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller so that I can still see your comments. Okay, let me start now. Now, now here you need to uh, just give you a few pointers. Uh, uh, pay attention to certain things uh, when you're answering questions. Okay, please make sure you write it very clearly and very, very uh, legibly. That means your handwriting can be seen. This is one thing because uh, as a teacher, of course, we get a lot of people, students marking, uh, students answers. Sometimes it's very difficult to read. And because it's very difficult to read, it's very difficult for us to find your points. So make sure you write very clearly, big letters, terang dan jelas, okay? Now, do not uh, use other pen color except blue or black because this is the one that can be seen very clearly, okay? And permanent ink, uh, do not write, do use the ones that can be erasable, okay? That's very tricky uh, because erasable, sometimes the paper can go through heat. Again, don't forget that uh, this paper is going to be scanned. All, all the examiners around Malaysia, we are not going to get your physical paper. We are going to look at the scanning of your paper. So when it's scanning, it's going to go through heat. Okay, I do not know about your special ink there, the ink that can be rubbed. I do not know whether the heat is going to make it fade away. So if it's faded away, habislah, all your answers supposed to be correct will not be able to be read by the examiner. Okay, so make sure you use just ball pen. Try not to use gel pen because gel pen... Some of them are not water, uh, what you call, uh, water soluble. Uh, some of them are water soluble. So if it can water, all right, maybe let's say banjir, uh, the negri, so happen your paper, uh, oh, sorry, uh, yeah, you, you will not be, yeah, you know, no, not physical, count, not physical marking, yes, it's going to be scanned. But anyhow, it's a bit risky if you have a um, non-permanent ink, all right? And do not use correction tape or correction liquid because uh, it's going to, um, what do you call it? It's going to mess up nah, your your answer. Sometimes you liquid and then you're waiting for it to dry and you forget to fill in your answer. Just cancel. It's going to waste time if you need to wait for it to dry and so on. So don't use correction tape. Many of the papers that I've got from students, eh, they, they, they corrected it and they forgot to write over it because probably they left it there to write something else and they forgot to write over it. So you just cancel and write your new answer. Okay. Now, for people want hitam kan, uh, just blank it with your 2B pencil only. Do not use pen because 2B pencil is the darkest and the most easy to be read by your scanner. This is going to be scanned by your OMR machine. It's not going to be human marked. So make sure you color it and the whole oval shape uh, has to be filled with your 2B pencil ink. Okay, uh, 2B pencil uh, shading. Do not leave any questions. It's very silly. Uh. If you do not know, just simply tembak. Because you, who knows, you may get it correct. I never leave your objective questions unanswered. Okay? And if you're not sure of your pilihan, let's say sometimes two answers are very close, you always do an elimination method. You first of all find out which answer yang tak mungkin, not possible. The answer is not possible, just cancel out. So your chances of hitting the correct answer will increase. For example, if you have four to choose, you have 25% of getting correct. But if you have eliminated two, you're only left with two you have a 50 50 percent percent chance of getting it correct okay so this is all very basic like i'm sure you know already okay next one uh paper two uh, do not repeat the fact that has already been given in the question for example the question says this process is called uh whatever for phagocytosis you saw an amoeba eating up some bacteria do not need to write the phagocytosis again in your answer scheme no marks will be given because it's already stated in the question but if it's not stated in the question, you choose to write the name of the process that you see. Yes, it's possible that they give you the mark. So always remember what is already given, do not need to repeat. Okay? 
For questions that compare and contrast or bonding than Beza, please remember to write the similarity, not just write the differences. A lot of students will always forget to write the similarity because they always think that they want to compare the difference. Okay, But similarity has got marks. If you only write all the differences, you forget one point on similarity, you don't write anything at all, you will never get the full point, a full marks. You'll be missing one mark at least for your similarity. Okay, and then you must mention or you bonding kind of compare with uh, what they call point by point. All right, you do not compare, uh, you don't write, write the whole paragraph on let's say A, and then the next paragraph on B. That one you'll probably get very low marks, you get the B probably one mark. Okay, if they are good enough to give you one mark. Otherwise, it will be zero because you do not see the comparison. So you say sentences like this. A is like this, but B is like this. So you mention it together in one sentence. Okay, A adalah begini, begini, A, A, dot, 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 dot. Tetapi B adalah mempunyai sifat-sifat begini. Okay, so A is this, but B is this. Put it in one sentence. And try not to write negative uh, sex sentences. That means do not have or something that is negative to the first one. A has this, but B does not have this. But if B does not have this, what does it have as a replacement? So try to make a positive statement. Okay. Now, before you answer for paper two, that means your essay and your structure, always look at your marks. Your marks is very, very important to indicate how much you should write and how detailed your answer should be. Okay. So if you have only one mark, uh, no need to elaborate at all. Okay. No need to elaborate, just say the fact. Usually state, name, ask you to give you the name, ask you to give the name on it. Just give the name and that's one mark for you, okay? You can give more points, especially for essay to, uh, for the explanation because sometimes your answer may not be in the scheme, but the other answer may have. So you always give more than, let's say the marks is three marks. Always make sure you have at least four or five points, okay? And remember, before you answer, read your question two times at least do not be too happy and then you think you read once and then you know you think you know what you what the question wants and then you write it like thing, huh? and then you write it already and suddenly you find oh oh and you read again another time the question asks for something else okay so do not waste your time writing the unnecessary answer make sure you know what the question wants all right next one and always write the correct istilah huh? use the correct term and must have the correct answer. I'm uh, sorry, correct spelling. We are quite particular about special terms like mitochondria. All right, don't put mitochondrion, A-N. Uh, you have to put meiosis in the correct spelling, phagocytosis and so on. Okay, now let's start with the question, okay, for this topic. Now, diagram 4.1, 4.2, 3 shows the actions of three types of blood cells in the human defense mechanism. Okay, look at the three types. Huh? I don't have them. PM also. Okay, the first one shows blood cell P. Uh, looks like it plugging the hole that the, the, the wound. Second diagram shows your bacteria eating up. Oh no, not bacteria. The blood cell Q is eating up the bacteria. And diagram 4.3 shows your blood cell R is like trying to do something to the antigen. Okay, what's the question? Name your blood cells P and Q. Okay, so what is P, what is Q? Very simple. You know the diagram. What is it doing there? Okay, you can see that it's plugging the hole there, the plugging that, that wound. So it must be platelet, okay, for your P. And you look at your Q. Your Q is trying to eat up your bacteria. So it must be a white blood cell or a phagocyte, okay? And look at the answer. Name. Name one mark is enough. Just say platelet. And for the other one, it can be platelet cell, it can be leukocyte, very general, it can be phagocyte, very specific, or it can be neutrophil. Okay, so these are the acceptable answers. So I'm telling that these are actual questions that came up at SPM. So to see how the, 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 the level of the questions. Okay, first question is always very simple, name it. Okay, next one. Explain the importance of the action of blood cell P. Okay, what is... Why is it important to plug up the hole there? Okay, that's what it means. Why need to explain? Uh? Usually explain will have a minimum of two marks. At least uh, two marks. So when you see the importance, okay, you no need to describe how it happens. You just say why is it necessary. No need to explain. 
if it happens, then you have a long uh, a series of answers where you have uh, all the sequences, the process, blah, blah, blah. That one cannot be too much. That one has to be more than much. Okay, more than much. Okay, so number one, P1, it causes blood clotting, platelet clump or plaque form at the wound. Okay, you have to read the platelet membrane. So the BM version you can read on your own, all right? Then number two, covers the wound, menutupi luka. So it covers the wound so that your blood will not flow out. Your red blood cell will not flow out. To prevent microorganisms from entering the body, that's another function. We do not want bacteria to enter your body and cause infection in your body. Okay? That is the importance. And of course, is to stop blood loss. Huh? Prevent excessive blood loss or stop bleeding. Okay, so any two points here. Okay? And also to maintain blood pressure. Because if your blood keeps uh, flowing out, the blood pressure will drop. All right? Okay? So any two points is enough for you to hear about five points, just two points to get. Okay, no questions at uh, the moment. Let me carry on. All right, so let's see. Uh. Explain the action of blood cell Q on bacteria. Uh, the second diagram here has this blood cell Q trying to eat up the bacteria. So when you see that, you must mention the word phagocytosis. One of the points you can give you is the process of eating up the bacteria where it surrounds it with your uh the cytoplasm okay or the pseudopodium so here you will see that it's trying to eat up the bacteria right all right so how to say the action of it explain uh, explain the process so here phagocytosis will give you one mark the process name right name of surrounding the bacteria second one is you of course give more information uh, right because there are two marks so phagocyte is referring to the cell that that quite the cell or the neutrophil is attracted to the bacteria or the pathogen or the antigen and then extends or forms pseudopodium all the strokes means you don't need to write all of them you just write one, one of them okay sorry the lightning just struck <laughs> so very heavy rain here i hope the internet is good yeah so it just any of the any of the word yeah, is in just one word is important. I'm just what we'll, we'll do. Okay, next. Phagocyte or neutrophil, all right, engulfs or menelan or it will swallow up, uh, the surrounds it, surrounds the bacteria or the pathogen, surrounds or binds itself to the bacteria. Okay, next. It forms a phagosome. Phagosome is actually the food vacuum. So once it's covered up, that, that, that vacuum is called phagosome. Okay, it's like the food vacuum. Or it's called a phagocytic vesicle. And then what do you do with that? The enzyme, okay, will be released into it. So the enzyme, it releases the enzyme, all right, into the phagosome. Actually, it comes from the lysosome, right? The lysosome will come over and then it releases, it fuses with the phagosome. The enzyme goes into it. The enzyme will digest the uh, bacteria. Okay, the last point is to digest or to destroy the bacteria or the pathogen or the antigen. Okay, so here is actually the whole process. If you write from P1, uh, P2 to P6, it's the entire process. If your question asks me for four marks, you will get full marks already. Okay, but here just any two points will do. All right, because too few marks to go because they want to ask other things. All right, okay, any two points. All right, okay, no questions at the moment. Let me carry on. State the action of antibody on the antigens. Ah, this is the th third diagram, 4.3. All right, and you see what is the action. Look at carefully the diagram, observe and look at it again. You will see that the antibody is like stuck to the antigen. The antibody has come to surround it, okay? It's like making it stick together. Now, you see the keyword stick together? That is coagulate or we say agglutinate. Okay, now, see what's the answer. Action. Action is what does it do? What does the antibody do to the antigen? One mark only. That means very simple. Right? You can write any of the points here. State the action. So, agglutination or you can say antibody clumps the antigen together. Okay, the antibody will help to make the antigen stick together. And... We do not accept this answer. Uh, antibody traps the antigen together. Okay, for some reason, 
that year we didn't accept this word lah. Don't say trap lah. You can say clump together. Better still use the word, the correct term, agglutination. Okay, use the correct term. Okay, next one. I think there's a question here. Am I lagging? Oh, okay, pro earphone. Okay, no problem. You can watch the uh, beginning part of the 20 minutes later, uh, earlier, all right? You can watch it. You can even rewind it. You can watch it from any time, okay? You just carry on now first. Okay, next. Now, here's another question. Individual care has recovered from measles. Okay, measles is nyakit champa, the mum champa. He has immunity to the disease in the future. That means he himself got measles. So maybe through friends uh, or to family from a family member. So he has got contracted the measles from somebody, right? But he has already, uh, he's already recovered. That means he, he is no longer sick, all right? And then he has immunity already. That means next time he will not get the disease again. Now, individual M does not have measles before, but he gets an injection with suspension S. So suspension S is a substance. And then after getting suspension S, this individual has immunity to the disease already. Now, you can see there are two ways you can get immunity. In fact, there are four ways. Lah. This is only two ways. One way is you must get the disease first. But of course, you don't die from it. Lah. You're still stronger than the disease, right? In the end, what you get is you're protected because you never get it again. Inside your body, you already have antibody made inside there during the infection. Okay? And the second, the statement why here is for people who don't have, they are not, they are not exposed to the disease yet, but somehow they want to prevent it. They do not want to get the disease, so they purposely get an injection. Actually, this is vaccination. Ah, that's what we are doing our vaccination ah, from your COVID-19, right? We do not want to get the disease. We want to get prevention. So we go and inject ourselves with the COVID-19 vaccine first because we want to have, we want to build the immunity to the COVID-19. When the real bacteria, real virus comes here or into our body, we will not get the disease. Okay, so let's see how to answer this. What's the question first? The question here is, uh, wait, uh, uh, recovered. See the keywords, uh, recovered in the future, not going to get sick. Uh. And the next one, uh, symbol. all right, let's just go through that. What is this statement? Uh, describe, uh, describe this statement. That means what has happened here? He's recovered and he's not going to get the disease in the future. So what kind of immunity is this? Okay, describe. So uh, let me go through what is the, my answer. Uh, during the infection, all right, when the person is already sick uh, with this disease, the white blood cell inside the body or the lymphocyte or the B lymphocyte are stimulated by the virus to produce antibody. This is what happens every time you get sick. Your body is making the antibody. Okay, so it triggers an immune response. So your body will get the antibody right and then after that your, your antibody will going to destroy your antigen so your pathogen will be destroyed by your antibody or right? maybe a glutination whatever lah. there's so many methods so you are not going to get the disease you're going to recover from it and then you have this memory cells we call a memory lymphocyte it will stay in the body because it's already been activated your virus already activate your memory cells your memory cells are there. They can recognize. They can still recognize the same virus if they come again another time later. So once it come in again, these memory cells are already there. They can immediately attack the virus. So you're not going to get sick the second time. Okay? So the first time you're going to get sick. But the first time is important. You're going to make your antibody. Okay, so P5, your memory cells are there. They are able to produce antibody rapidly. To fight the same antigen or pathogen later, another round, okay? Berupaya menghasilkan antibody dengan cepat untuk melawan antigen atau pathogen yang sama. So the same disease comes and attack you again, you are not going to be sick. Alright, okay? So this is the whole idea of you getting sick. Alright, you're getting sick actually sometimes it's a good thing because you are building the immunity to that disease. And sometimes you do not get it again, alright? So like measles law. Okay, uh, certain like, uh, what uh, me chicken pox, measles, uh, rubella, all right, all this you don't get again. All right, now, second one, last one, uh, one, more sen one more sentence. You gain natural active immunity. So, the name of that immunity is called natural active immunity, or we call it naturally acquired active immunity. 
Now, only two words are important here, which is the word natural and active. The word immunity sometimes is given in the question. You don't need to say also never mind, not important. But you must to say it's natural, naturally acquired, active immunity. Active because your body makes the antibody. That's why it's called active. Your body is doing it. Okay, now let's look at the second one. The second is a different way. Right? This one too much for me. Yeah? The different, the person also gets immunity, but in a different way. All right? Different way is, doesn't have to have to, to be sick. The person doesn't have to fall sick. You're just taking an injection to prevent the disease. So this is actually called vaccination. Okay, let me go straight to the answer scheme. So the first point here is you mentioned it is vaccination. Then the suspension is called vaccine. Vaccine is actually the virus or the bacteria that has been treated. Okay, you treat it so the virus does not make you sick. Okay, but it is enough to give you the reaction. Uh, your white blood cell will react to it to produce the antibody only. But that virus has probably been taken out the D, uh, RNA, taken out the RNA, so it does not cause you the disease. But it is enough to make your white blood cell react to it. Why? Because the outer coat. The virus has an outer coating of protein called capsid. And that is the one that is responsible to make your white blood cell respond to it and make your antibody. Okay, so vaccine contains weakened or dead pathogen. So the pathogen is no longer vi viral. and uh, uh, We call it virulent. That means no longer able to give you sick, uh, the illness. Uh, but it's good enough to make your body produce the antibody. Okay, so next one. To stimulate your white blood cell to produce antibody, all right? Next one. Uh, the body will gain immunity against the disease because your body already get the antibody. Okay, antibody is able to destroy the antigen. Anytime you get the real strong virus enter your body, immediately your antibody will attack. That means you are not going to get sick. Okay, so this is a prevention. So this kind of antibody uh, immunity is called artificial active. Artificial because you purposely go and inject the thing in your body. You didn't fall sick in the beginning. But you want to prevent future uh, problems, right? You do not want to get sick. You purposely inject stuff. It's called artificial. Active is because your body produces the antibody inside your body. Okay, you produce antibody. Okay, I think it's clear cut, huh? Everybody, no questions. Please, you understand, right? You already revised this. Okay, let's go on to the next one. My thing, I think it's a little bit lagging, huh? All right, all right. Let's go to the next question. Now, two person. P and Q were given injections uh, to acquire immunity. Two persons, right? The level of antibodies are given in this diagram. So you see that the level of antibody are different. Okay. Now memorize the shape. The shape is always like that. For the first type, you notice there are two mountains. One is a small mountain, the next one is a larger and a taller mountain. Okay. This one is always now remember, this is through vaccination. We purposely put the substance or the antigen into your body to make your white blood cell produce the antibody first before you fall sick. So the first diagram, you see the two mountains there, all right, which is sloping, uh, slope, uh, you can see the slope here, all right? It is not straight up. It slowly, it takes time for your body to make the antibody. So it's going to be a slope there. Then after that, it will come down because it is, uh, not maybe your body is breaking down the antibody, right? Then you need another stimulation to make this level to make your body make even more. So your antibody level will be higher when you get your second injection, which we also conference we call is the booster dose, booster or the second injection. Okay, and the other type here, the individual Q, this one is when we give you this substance, the injection is not the vaccine, we give you directly the antibody. That means your body do not need to make the antibody. We are injecting the antibody in your body. So this is anti-serum injection or just serum that contains antibody. Okay, let's see the question. Okay, injection, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so these are keywords to look up for. Okay, see the first one, all right? And it takes time for you to reach. For the second one, uh, immediately it shoots up so high because it already passed the level of immunity. That means it's strong enough to 
prevent you from getting the disease. But for the first injection, you see, it doesn't go up directly because you need time for your body to make the antigen in the body. The second one, don't make, don't make. All right. Now, let's look at the question. What is the substance injected into the blood of the first person, which is the P, okay? And the second person, the Q, all right, remember the shape. The first one is got two small mountains, one, one small mountain, one bigger mountain, but it's slanting, slope. Okay, so the substance, give the substance name, ah. you can say vaccine, you can say dead or weakened or attenuated. Attenuated means weakened, okay? Process already, pathogen. You can also say vaccine, all right? Next one, this is the serum containing antibodies, which is called anti-serum. So the second one, you think immediately there's a straight line. It goes up right to the top. That means your body doesn't need to make it. It is what you inject inside that is exactly that antibody. So once you get in, it immediately goes shoot, shoot up to the high level. Okay, next one. So what is the next question? Explain the type of immunity obtained by the two persona. Okay, so the first was an individual P. The one is actually vaccination. Ah, right, so this I show you the back of the diagram. The second one is where you can see a straight line, then come down again. Then straight line, another jab, they go straight up, then come down again. Okay, so here the type of immunity name, the, uh, give the name, explain the type, explain. Okay, first of all, the name is called active immunity, artificial active, because we are injecting vaccine into the body. Okay, so the explanation, the body produces its own antibodies, okay, to fight the infection by pathogen. So the body produces its own antibodies, that means it is active, lo. your body is actually making antibody. Okay, now second one, uh, this is the BM version, okay, Mangasika antibodies in theory. The next one is artificial passive, okay, is artificial passive because you don't make it. Your body doesn't make it. That's called what I call passive. We inject the antigen into your body. It's artificial because we inject inside. Passive because your body doesn't make it. We are giving you the antibody. This antibody is produced from external source, usually animals like horse, okay? Certain animals which are strong enough to produce the antibody to the bacteria or to the virus. And then we take out the blood, we process it, then we take the uh, serum out, and then we take the antibody out and then we put it into bottles and that is your anti-serum. Okay, so it get from it, you get it from external source to fight against infection by pathogens. All right, and this is passive. Lah. All right, so you have one, the four marks. So one mark for the name, one mark for how it works. Okay, the explanation. Okay, next one. A boy was beaten by a snake. He was unconscious, sent to the hospital. Using your biological knowledge, uh, okay, that means must be based on what you already know. Lah. Describe how you could save this boy. Now, this is a little bit of K-Bart here already, okay? So, bitten by a snake. Bitten by a snake means you know, it's poison, venom, okay? Poison in the snake bite, the chemical inside that. So, unconscious, sent to hospital. Now, you need to neutralize that toxin. You need something to neutralize the poison, all right? And that's what do you give that person? You have to give injection correct. But what kind of injection? You need to give anti-serum. If you say injection, you're not going to get any marks because it is not specific enough. Definitely, you can guess. Everybody can guess. Give injection or go to send the hospital or give injection or what injection? Okay, you need to say it is an anti-serum injection. Okay, let's see the question. Uh, let's see the answer now. All right, now this is the question in BM. Okay, snake. Snake is venomous, that means got poison. Now, describe how you could save it, save the boy, what you can give. All right, number one, the boy should be given an injection of anti-serum or anti-toxin. So it's the same con uh, concept. Anti-serum is just the serum or the we have processed it from the animal, right? We've taken out the, uh, we call it antibody. So we call it anti-serum or anti-toxin. But it's going to neutralize the toxin in the, uh, the snake bite or the, 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 the saliva or whatever chemical. Lah. Okay, number two. That's why you must say, and don't just give injection, injection no name, uh, no marks. The snake venom or toxin acts as an antigen to our body cells. So it's the antigen. Okay, when it comes into our body, it is going to be antigen. So our white blood cell will try to 
neutralize it. But somehow it doesn't work because the snake venom is actually very strong. Our body is trying to trying to uh, what do you call overcome it, trying to neutralize the toxin. Sometimes it doesn't. We will die from the snake bite because not strong enough. Our white blood cell is not able to produce that venom and also it needs time remember but this venom acts very fast so you do not have the time on your side so it needs immediate injection of anti-serum because if you were to rely on your body to make that antibody it will take maybe a few weeks to make by the time you're already dead okay because the anti the toxin by the snake acts in a, a matter of a couple of hours or even 10 minutes or 20 minutes or maybe half an hour it already go to your brain so if you, you cannot afford to wait for your own body to make the antibody, it will be too slow. By that time, uh, uh, one hour later, you will be dead already. So immediately, you have to get something to neutralize the toxin. So you have to inject the antiserum, which is the serum containing antibody. Okay. So the antibody immediately goes into your body. It will, uh, it will attack the antigen. It's going to surround the antigen and it's going to immobilize it. Is not going to attack our cells. Okay, so anti-serum is a serum containing antibody which is specific to the type of antigen. So it's going to be very specific. You must make sure you give the correct information to the doctor. What kind of snake is it? Is it, is it a cobra? Or is it a black mamba? Or is it a pit viper? They're all different. So by just saying you it's a snake, you don't expect the doctor to know what snake it is. They cannot give you the correct antiserum. So please remember, if you do not know what snake it is, go and take a picture of the snake, if you can still find it, and send it together with the patient. Hospital, I show the doctor what kind of, what kind of snake it is, okay? Probably they will give you, they need to give you the correct antibody because it is very specific, okay? They have specific antiserum for specific snake bites. Not one can fit all. One is not the antidote for all. Okay, one to one. All right, so this is why I'm telling you. Huh? You do not know what thing it is, take a picture. All right, go and see. Go and tell the doctor. Go and show the doctor and they can probably tell you what it is, what they need to give you. So it's specific, all right? Antibody will react with antigen or the sleep venom. venom. Once it goes into your body, it will neutralize the toxin. So it has no time to kill you. Right, because your antibody already neutralized the toxin. Right, you are safe. Right, or the boy is safe. That's that. All right. So this is how you mention. You notice that every sentence has a point, and that there's a term there. So please use the correct term. You cannot just simply shooting in the dark. All right, you cannot be shooting in the dark. Just say, ah, take anti, uh, ubat, ubat. Uh, just take ubat la, or go and eat some medicine la, injection la. No, means you got no facts. You are goring, goring, goring. You goring, there's no facts there. You tak boleh dapat maka. Okay? Make sure you have your facts. And how do you get your facts? You have to read. There's no other way. There's no short form of getting your facts. Okay? Next. Ah, table 5 shows a schedule of immunization given for every newborn Malaysian. Ah, so this is the latest now, right? The Every newborn Malaysian, you have to undergo this, uh, what they call, a program of immunization. Uh, you can get from the clinic kerajaan. It's free for you, right? Free for all, all citizens of Malaysia. It's free, okay? Just bring your baby there and it'll give you the injection. So this is the table. Newborn, you give this blah, blah, blah. One month, you have another do a second dose of your hepatitis B, three and five. Now, don't need to remember this. You don't need to memorize this. If there's any question, they will give you the table. You just need to know that you need to take booster. For example, tuberculosis, you take it once. You can find that later on, uh, I think not, not 18 months, uh, in when you go to primary school, seven years old, you take another tuberculosis, BCG. Hepatitis B, you get first dose, and then the next month, you get your second dose, and later, six months, you get your third dose, and later, after, you also may get your booster dose. So then now the question asks you, why do you need to get booster dose? Why is one injection not enough? Why you need to get second dose, third dose, uh, second, third, and even booster. It's the same thing. But why you must take again and again, just like your COVID-19? You have to booster dose after first and second, right? Booster dose. Why? Explain why every parent must follow the schedule of immunization. Ah, why you must follow this? Because here the focus is you must mention the importance of getting the second dose, the third dose, and the booster. 
what does it do? Why take the same injection again? Because it serves a purpose. All right. So answer, explain why. All right. So your question is immunization is to prevent infection. Nah. All right. The first thing is you want to be protected. You don't get the disease, but you do not want to get the disease later. Okay. You don't want you want to prevent it first. You don't want to make you want to make sure you don't get it. All right. Number two, newborns are injected with vaccine. Okay, so baby that's born immediately on the day is born is given one dose already. So what does the vaccine do? All right, is to acquire this is called the artificial active immunity lah, because the baby will actually white blood cell will be producing the antibody the baby. All right, because your the vaccine already went inside the body. So next, antigens in the vaccine. So the first dose. When you give the antigen, the, I mean the, the vaccine, first dose, uh, it will stimulate the lymphocyte to produce antibody. It will stimulate. It will start the process already. Start the process slowly. Lah. I think it may take a few weeks. Lah, right? Slowly, you will have the process started. All right? But the dose, uh, the, the concentration of the antibody is not enough, actually. Okay? The first dose we will, re will, reduce, uh, will result in a low level of antibody. You're going to get very little. It's not going to get a lot or is insufficient, not enough to protect the individual from the disease. It's not enough. Tidak cukupi untuk melindungi individu daripada jangkitan. It's not enough. So therefore, that's why you need another dose spaced out within the next few months. And I recall the second dose, later on the booster dose. Okay, next one. Continue. Subsequent doses like the second, third, or the booster are needed to increase the antibody production. So the key word here is to increase the antibody production. Until how? Until to a level of immunity. It must uh, pass a certain level. The level is usually noted in the graph as a dotted line, a horizontal dotted line. That means the person must be minimum, must achieve that level higher than it, then only consider strong enough. Your antigen, uh, sorry, your antibody is strong enough to give you the protection. Okay, so to us, Mencapai aras keimunan to a level of immunity that can protect the baby. That means must go higher than that level. Okay, the antibodies will remain in the body for a long time. Okay, so don't think that it's only for that. It will carry on for the rest of your life or the baby's life. So it's good because it stays there and it will give immunity for the whole entire lifetime of the baby. The baby will be protected against the disease. Now here, be specific because the question asks for baby. So make sure you say baby, 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 baby all the way through. It shows that you're answering specific to the question. Don't say the adult, uh, don't say the person. Uh. It's actually because of immunization for babies. Ma. Remember the question? So babies means you have to talk about baby uh, in terms of babies. Okay, so how to, uh, your question there is I think eight marks, is it? Uh, okay, never mind. You just write as much as you can to answer the question. Okay, now third question. Let's go on to the third question. Now, Diagram 7.1 shows an electron micrograph of cellular components in the human blood. Ah, you human blood, you get all this. Ah. Okay, you have your neutrophil, your monocyte, different types of white blood cell. You have your platelets, you have your red blood cells. Okay, question. Based on diagram 7.1, explain how platelets help to stop bleeding. Ah, this is now bleeding. Ah, bleeding is a component, uh, important function of the blood. So you're going to stop bleeding. That means you're going to talk about the function of platelet to stop bleeding. How the blood clots. Okay, so you're going to mention that four marks. How does it stop bleeding? Now, before that, let's revise the whole process of uh, stopping blood. Right? Blood from bleeding. Okay, let's look at this one. This one is your, there's a wound here. There's a wound here, look at that. You see your white blood cell going out, right? Now, you, what happens is your activated platelet will be there to plug it. And the end, you will get fibrin. And your erythrocytes are going to be stuck there. It will be trapped there. Okay, so let's look at the, the, the sequence. You have coagulated platelet. You also have your damaged cells there at the wound site, the kawasan luka, other cell yang rosak. And also, you have one more thing, the clotting factor. Clotting factor are proteins proteins in the blood in the uh, plasma of the blood okay now all these three things the digger digger in it will stimulate a protein called thrombokinase 
is a something like an enzyme. Okay, this is a uh, an activator, or another name is called thromboplastin. So all these three are going to activate this thrombokinase, and with the help of calcium ion and also uh, another thing is your vitamin K, both of them are going to make this thrombokinase converted into something called actually to convert your prothrombin into thrombin. Okay, so your thrombokinase with your calcium ion and your vitamin K will help this prothrombin become thrombin. If prothrombin is not active, you need something to activate it. That is the thrombokinase. Okay, so now your thrombin is activated. It is now ready to activate another thing. So it's a bit complicated. It's not one straight line. So it's like this one forms this and this one help to activate another thing. Okay, so your this active plasma protein will, uh, what do you call, stimulate, all right, the conversion of fibrinogen into fibrin. Fibrinogen is soluble, so you're not going to see any solid there. It's uh, liquid, just like liquid, uh, soluble in the plasma of the blood. But once your thrombin is there, your fibrinogen akan ditukarkan, converted into fibrin. And your fibrin are like all these wires or netting. All right, it's going to like, you know, going to form all this netting and it's going to trap your red blood cells. So your red blood cell will not flow out. Okay, so it's insoluble because you see all these lines and wires, not wires, like all these fibers, like fibers. It's microscopic. Yeah? Now you can see that all these microscopic fibers are trapping the red blood cells. And you see that now this is a common mistake my students are. Huh? They will write things like freebinogen or freebin. It is wrong. Bukan freebinogen, bukan freebin, tapi fibrinogen. Your R must be in the correct place. Huh? This is what I mentioned, your term. Huh? The term that you write must be correct and the spelling. If you say free, freebinogen there, you don't get your last point there because sudah salah. Okay, so remember, this is a common mistake. Huh? A lot of students say free bin. It's wrong. It's fibrin. Your R comes later. Okay, understand? All right, so this is what, from my experience as a teacher, I know that students make this mistake. So I hope you do not make the mistake. All right, next. Huh? This is a overview of the whole process. So now you're going to put that in words to explain, to, to write your essay, to answer the question. Okay, so sample answer. So how are you going to write it? Platelets exposed to the air. So it has to be exposed to the air because there's a wound there. There's a cut there. So it's going to be exposed to the air. They will clump together and they will produce thrombokinase or thromboplastin. You can also mention the damage, fact, uh, damage cells and the active, uh, we call the uh, clotting factors. Okay, they also help to produce the thrombokinase or thromboplastin. Then thrombokinase or thromboplastin converts the prothrombin into thrombin in the presence of also you need calcium ion and one more thing is the vitamin k so this is also needed okay then the thrombin will convert the fibrinogen which is soluble to fibrin which is insoluble all right and then your fibrin will form a network like all these fibers will trap the erythrocyte or what we call the red blood cells and it will stop the blood, uh, the red blood cells from flowing out. Okay, it forms the clot. So the clot will pluck the hole there, will pluck the wound, and then later that wound, that blood there is going to dry up. Okay, you're going to get a eh, finish already. Ah, okay, you're going to get a scab. A scab is actually the uh, a little piece of you know the dry blood there, which you peel off later or it drops off by itself. And at the bottom, you'll see a pink color. This is actually new cells. All right, okay? This is forming a clot. Okay, now last part of the question is, ah, second last. Huh? Now, this is another question. A blood test shows that a man's erythrocyte count is below normal. That means not enough red blood cells. What's going, what's the effect on the person, on the condition of his health? So talk about his health. Huh? Another question, what type of food should the person take? To improve his condition. So there are two questions here. Explain the consequences 
on his health. What's going to happen to him if he has got very low erythrocyte? Another thing is what kind of food should he take? Okay, so this is a little bit of common sense, a common general, but of course you need the fat also. Okay, next answer. So let me go through all these keywords that you must read through. That's why you need to read the question twice to identify what you need to do. Okay, right. Sample answer, explain the possible consequences on health. So one part, you must address the question. Say what possibly can happen to his health. So less the person has got less red blood cells, that means got less hemoglobin, all right? Less hemoglobin. That means it cannot combine with oxygen so much. Huh? It means it cannot carry so much oxygen. It cannot form so much of oxyhemoglobin. Use all the correct words. Use all the bombastic words, huh? okay, to show that you know your facts. So less oxygen is transported to the body cells or the tissue. You have less oxygen. So think about what's going to happen if the person has less oxygen. Okay, so the person cannot carry out so much cellular respiration. So it's going to be less cellular respiration. All right, that means it produces energy. Cellular respiration produces energy. So the person have less energy. Remember this word, less, 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 less. Okay, and the opposite one, if you're talking about more, you must say more, 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 more. That's important huh? because we look at it when we mark it. So less energy is produced. So what happens? The person is going to feel very tired, very breathless, weakness. So not enough energy is actually a sign you do not have enough oxygen because you need the oxygen to carry out respiration to produce your energy. Okay, so the effect here is the person is going to feel tired, cannot carry out uh, this vigorous activity. You can also have pale looking appearance. The person looks very pale, quite quite like that. Nah. Again, don't have blood color, nah. don't have the red rosy cheeks and all that. Nah. We call it quite quite nah. putih putih. Anemia, the person can have a problem when you have do not have enough uh, red blood cells. You call it anemia, right? Anemia, same lah in the end. And a suggestion to improve. Okay, how to improve? What should the person do to improve his condition? So he must take food that is rich in iron or ferrum. So ferrum is needed to make your hemoglobin molecules. You need more ferrum so that you can make more hemoglobin. Okay. So what kind of food? Cockles. Cockles is like the, we call it sihama in Cantonese. Uh, sihama. It's like the kerang. Uh, kerang all right? Liver. Okay. The liver of uh, chicken uh, or any animal. Uh, right? Spinach also will have a good, uh, it's a good source of uh, iron in the vegetable. Uh, all right? So any eight points here, you can get your, your full mark. All right? So it's not very difficult. I'm sure you can get at least six marks there. All right? Next. Ah, okay. I think it's the last part of the question. All right. Blood circulatory system. All right. Organism S and T. So look at what is S. So this one is a single, we call it, uh, what do you call the single circulatory system. And then that one's got double. I uh, see the difference there. Got two loops. Huh? Give example of organism. Now give the name of an organism. And then describe the similarities and differences. So there are two questions here. All right. Similarities and differences. Don't forget to say the similarity. So what kind of organism is S? Okay, just wondering whether you're still here. Can you give me an example of what is S here? What animal will have this kind of circulatory system when it's single on it? It's like it just flow in one direction and it comes back here. It's like, no, it doesn't go to the heart, doesn't, uh, doesn't go to the lungs, doesn't go to the gills or whatever. This is what kind of animal? Anyone? Kaysin Chiang. Ah. Fish or my oju. Yes, very good. Yeah. Oh, my Oju. Yes, this is fish. Where you have single circulatory system. Right? Very, very easy to, uh, to recognize. You can, uh, of all the vertebrates, only the fish has the single, but, uh, single what you call the circulatory system. Okay? And the others who have double, like the amphibian, the reptile, the bird, and the human, they are all double. Okay, so answer based on this, based on this, make sure you look at the diagram. Huh? Example. All right? Then... Similarities, differences. Okay, let's look at the answer. Here. All right, where's the answer? Ah, okay, fish. Yes. For the second one, you can say human. You can say mammal. You can say bird. All right. You cannot say amphibian because you see uh, it is a reptile and, and amphibian. They have an incomplete separation of the left and right side of the heart. But you can see here very clearly, there's a septum. 
separating the left and the right. So you cannot write your amphibian or reptile already. You must write your mammal or your bird because you can see very clearly the septum separate the left and the right side. There's no mixture of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. The other pechamporan, dara tak oxygen dan dara oxygen. Okay, so next one. So similarities, okay, talk about similarity, both. Always answer similarity questions with the word both. Both have blah, 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 blah. Okay, both have closed circulatory system. They are closed because the blood never flows out of the vein or the artery. It never flows out. It's always in the tube, all right? That's why we call it closed. Another one, blood flows in blood vessels out. It means it's always there, all right? It's always in the blood vessels. And both will have, you see the difference, uh, you see the similarity first, I look at the diagram here, look at that diagram, compare. Both have hearts, both have atrium, all right, and ventricle, but of course the number is different. Uh. For the fish, there's only one atrium, one ventricle. For the human or the bird here, two atrium, two ventricle, okay, but they still have the atrium and ventricle. What else? The heart or atrium or ventricle or a ventricle and atrium will pump blood or the, this one acts as a pumping organ. Both of them act as a pumping organ. Okay, so there's the similarity. Now, what are the differences? The maximum two on it, all right? So don't worry, just give two similarities. Now, differences, uh, differences here, we got more marks. Huh? So differences, you have to write, compare point by point. So that means you do not write everything about S first, and then you write after the next the paragraph, you write T. Like I mentioned, this is a very big no-no. Huh? You're going to lose a lot of marks. You're going to cry if you know that. So make sure you write first point. You want to compare what? You want to compare single circulation. Okay, Organism S has single circulation. Okay, Blood flows in one direct, uh, one complete circulation. Uh, once only, it flows through the heart once only in one complete circulation. But for the organism T, it has double circulation. In one complete circulation, it will flow the heart twice. You can count, right? Go in, come out, go in again, and then come back to the same place. Okay, so write that together. One mark. Okay, D2. Talk about the number of chambers in the heart. For the fish, it only got two chambers, which is the atrium and ventricle only. But for the human or the bird, you have four chambers. That means two atrium or three atria and two ventricles. Okay, there's something to compare. Next one, another differences. So organism P uh, S does not have septum. You, you don't see anything separating. They, they don't have your right and left part of the the heart. Okay, don't have left and right. You don't have don't need a septum to separate. It just has one ventricle and one atrium. But organism T, you have four because two of this, two of that. You need something to separate. So the heart has a septum. This is another point. Okay, next. Okay, what about the direction of flow, blood flow from where to where? For the fish, oxygenated blood flows from the gill. So it comes from the gill, which is already oxygenated, and it goes directly to the body tissue. It doesn't flow back to the heart. After picking up oxygen uh, for the fish, uh, for the fish, the blood, after picking up oxygen in the gills, it doesn't come back to the heart, you know. It goes directly. They can throw pergi ke body cells it will directly be transported to the body cell and then only comes back to the heart, okay? It doesn't come back to the heart first before going to the body cell. But for your T, which is the human or the bird, after picking up oxygen from the lungs, it's a no gill, huh? lungs, it will come back to the heart first and then only the heart pump it to the body cells. So there is one difference here, okay? That's why you have the, the double circulatory system for the animals, huh? I mean for the bird and the human, huh? double because it comes back to the heart first. Okay, lastly, okay, and one more thing we can talk about. What about the deoxygenated blood flow? Leh? For the fish, it comes from the heart. The blood already from the body cell go to the heart. Now the heart goes directly to the uh, gills. Okay, it directly go to the gill. Okay, from the heart go to the gill. Then for this human or bird, deoxygenated blood flows from the heart to the lungs. Okay, it's the difference here is the term lah. That one for the gills, this one for the lungs. All right, okay. So here you can see very clearly you must write in terms of perbandingan, in terms of point by point by point or the aspect you're talking about. Okay, so 
Now, so in the next lesson, I'm going to give you some pointers how to calculate percentage of vitamin C. All right, this is the next lesson. Now, it's going to be the last one before you have your bio paper. So the next lesson, I'm going to throw the whole sink at you, give you the whole kitchen sink. It means I give you everything. How to remember how to calculate your vitamin C, la, your blah, blah, blah. I give you this kind of thing. La. This I'm going to show you next week yeah, because it's really one hour. All right. And also about some questions that calculation and so on okay so this is roughly what i'm going to give you next week plus again and my topic is on environmental issues because uh, i'm thinking about environment issues is actually quite common all right questions and you can actually score uh, if you know what to write okay so i'm going to see you all right okay jiawei thanks for your answer i didn't see it just now uh yash and uh, jianxi Tan Jian Zi, yeah, okay, and Jia Wei. Okay, thanks for joining my class. Next week, I'm going to give you the whole kitchen sink. That means I'm going to throw the whole kitchen sink at you. That means I'm going to give you everything that you may need to answer your objective question, for especially calculation and also formulas to remember and also environmental issues. I'm going to tackle some environmental issues, okay, which is quite common in your soalan terbuka, which is your C, your, your bahagian C. Okay, right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Jiao Wei. And I hope to see you next week, all right? Your final online class, all right? Hopefully, uh, I'm also getting some online uh, classes with my own girls. Lah. So, Jiao Wei, I uh, hope you can join. So, okay. So, uh, I will see you next week then. If you have any questions, please do uh, contact me by my Telegram. Okay, I'll give you my Telegram. Lah. So, you can message me from my Telegram. I'll be happy to answer your questions if I can help you. All right. So, I will see you next week then. All right. Good luck this weekend uh, revising your sejarah, your maths, and your moral. Okay? All right. See you next week. Bye-bye. All right. Have a good weekend. And don't forget to sleep and eat. Huh? All right? Don't just study all the time. Bye-bye. See you.